Hello and Happy New Year to all of you watching this. I'm Ty Stedman. This is the debut episode of New Esports TV for the 2017 season and pre-season. Over the next seven to eight weeks, we'll be going around to each and every New FM club and talking to coaches, players and everyone in between about how 2017 is panning out for that particular club. This year it's all about changes from Josh Rufo going to Bell Swans to Graham Law at Cooks Hill, Chris Gallagher back at Walls End, coaching changes all over the place, and as well as a new club, we welcome the new Lambton Eagles in their 100th year into the new FM competition, back into a competition that they haven't been in for a good 20 years or so. Back in big time football are the Eagles in 2017. So sit back, relax and enjoy the weekly instalment of New Esports TV, the bigger and better New Esports TV in 2017. Once again, Happy New Year. Welcome to episode one of New Esports TV in 2017. Hello and welcome to New Esports TV in 2017. This is episode one. I am Ty Stedman. Very, very excited to be bringing you another uh, season, another pre-season, all starting uh, right now for me and again probably starting a bit later for the clubs, some clubs starting later than others. Um, we're back. New FM Football will be back. Uh, the newly named Northern League One, I've got to get used to saying that, um, that's what we're dealing with this year. Um, again, like I said in the intro, New Lambton, the new team, uh, Lakes out. So again, 11 teams, same sort of um, formula as last year, 22 rounds, all that good stuff. But before then, we have seven or eight weeks of pre-season trial matches included in all that. Um, so there is a lot to get through. Um, not, not, not an incredible amount of stuff to get through tonight, but uh, we're going to go through it anyway. What, what tonight is, is simply, as I move a little bit closer, because I like being a, a bit closer to the camera, I don't want to be too far away. Um, that's one thing, the improvements this year, uh, the studio lighting, you can't see it, it's off camera. This screen in the background is going to have photos. Um, it's just an all around better aesthetic feeling for me and um, I've got all the info I need right here in front of me. Not that I need it because I can remember I can remember a lot. I've been told a lot over the last couple of months um, keeping in contact with the teams. So let's not waste any time. Um, this battery is already down to one bar so let's quickly get through this episode. Uh, next Friday night, or this Friday night coming, um, the 13th, I'll be heading out to Tanamba to speak to the Fortin Redbacks and that will be on next Monday's episode of New Esports TV, the big, 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 big feature on the Fortin Redbacks. Um, hopefully a 20 or 30 minute video there with a lot of interviews included. Let's talk about Belmont Swansea United, and that's good timing, that photo right there. I was going to start with first grade, let's talk about the 19s first, how about that? Backing up success from the uh, 2016 season, they were the champions. Um, I don't know who's coaching out there yet for the 19s. I don't know who's coaching 19s or 17s at Bell Swans, um, or indeed the new the new 15s competition. Um, I do know. I have been told from someone who was involved at Bell Swans that he reckons uh, Will Dundas and Joel Nicholson will be playing in first grade, well probably off the bench, fringe first grade, probably 23. So the 19s might have to deal with some some players going up. 
Um, they will get some players coming in from the 17s. I think Bell Swans 19s will be one to watch again next season. The big news out of Bell Swans though um, this off season is is the the uh, recruitment of Josh Rufo as head coach uh, for the 2017 Northern League One season. Formerly of Walls End FC, Josh Rufo needs no introduction. Um, he is not just a coach; he's a character, and that's. That's not saying he's a bad character, he's a good character. He is, he is more than a coach, I feel. He is a real sort of force. And uh, Wall's End, um, it didn't work out there. He did coach him to the 2015 title and left uh, during the season. Josh Rufo, I think, at Bell Swans is going to be a match made in heaven. Um, and I would say, if I didn't think it would work, because I'm, I'm that sort of person, I'm not going to sit here and lie about team's chances and whatnot. Bell Swans this year. Uh, Dan Rufo is joining him as well um, as, as assistant and probably the 23's coach. Bell Swans this year, this is an important year. Um, let's not lie, this is a three year window going into the uh, NPL application period of 2020. Um, but for Bell Swans, they want to go one better than last year. They made it to the grand final, they made it to the uh, infamous penalty shootout, and they deserve to win, in my opinion, a better team on the day, but they didn't. And for 30 years to get into a grand final and lose, they'll want to be back there again, no doubt. Luke Shearer returns, a former club captain, joining brother Joel, who is the current club captain. Not sure which one of those is going to be the captain. Somebody else who could also captain joining the club, Chris Gazard, needing no introduction. Um, what a signing, Chris Gazard, the Bell Swans, and Mitch Cook as well, who will be coaching some junior teams and uh, putting in a lot of work there at the club. He's joining from Walls End FC um, along with Chris Gazard. I tell you what, Bell Swans, this is, this is a big year for them. They're playing Edgeworth first up. Um, I hosted their presentation night and that was the feeling, you know, that the news came from Rufo um, to some of the other people involved there. It says, hey, we're playing, we're playing Edgeworth first because that's the point that Josh Rufo wants to prove and um, it's a big year for Bell Swans. I think they're definitely title contenders. Uh, they'll be they'll be wearing some new kits this year, uh, Joma doing the uh, Bell Swans kits and I just wanted to point out over the off-season they have been very active on Facebook, Bell Swans. Their field maintenance is probably second to none. That field is looking very very good at the moment. Um, you can't go wrong with with a good looking field in January. Hopefully it'll look that way most of the year out there at Blacksmiths. So that's Bell Swans um, again, we don't have any squad lists for for any of the grades, really. 17s, 19s, 23s first, um, even 15s, if, if, if you want to go um, that low at the club. And again, the 15s competition this year won't be really featured on the eSports. It's probably a bit in pre-season, um, but it's a different day. And um, that's, it's a, I think it's a good initiative, that competition, but I think it could be implemented a bit better. Um, Cessnock City. Let's talk about Cessnock City Hornets. This is probably, in my opinion, the big change club of the year. Um, Lino Gaddy coming in as head coach and technical director. Um, that's definitely a role, that, those words, technical director at Cessnock City, that's going to be a big role for him. Um, I've heard a lot from a couple of players there about how things work. Um, not a bad word said so far. Attitude, discipline, youth development, um, Cessnock. It's a big, big year for them. Um, Result-wise, I think they'll do better. I think they'll push for the top four. Um, that might be a bit of an overstatement, but what I do know is that across the board, they are going to be a more professional outfit. Um, and all in all, over the next few years, I think they'll become a bit of a, a real um, team to recognise in this competition. Um, that's what Lino Gaddy wants. Whether it happens or not is the question. Whether it can be implemented that's the challenge. Possible trials against NPL opposition, including the Western Workers, Bears, Arch, well not Arch rivals, but local rivals there at Cessnock. Um, and this is a good chance to talk about this, the Andy Harper Tournament uh, Invitational Heritage Cup, something, it's called something like that. Um, it is going to happen, I believe. I've been messaged a couple, a couple clubs have got in contact with me. Um, it's open to clubs 100 years and older. Walls End, Adamstown, Western and Cessnock are the teams involved so far that I know of. So that's a great initiative and hopefully, hopefully it'll be a big success in 
uh, early March, this, the week before the season starts. Returning players at Cessnock City, uh, David Skip O'Hearn, as he's known up there, um, Wade Atwell, Anthony Bauer, and Luke Johnson is back from injury. Um, those are the sort of players you need. David O'Hearn, um, true leader of, of the group. Um, Cessnock, did, they do have some decent, experienced players playing there. Um, so I'm not really sure who else is there for, uh, for Lino Gatti's side just yet. Uh, they have signed some youngsters, Lachlan Rand from uh, Umina, Riley Taylor from Edgeworth, who is quite good, um, only young, but um, definitely comes with a decent rating, and decent rating, I sound like I'm talking about FIFA now, don't I? Um, was rumoured to be going to Wolf End, so Riley Taylor going to Cessnock, and Travis McCabe from Warners Bay as well. I have also been told that there's some possible groundwork going on at Hornets Park or Turner Park. Um, I can't vouch for that, I haven't been up there, but I will be get, hopefully going up there during the pre-season. And um, Cessnock will be featured a lot here on New Sports this year, looking to get up there at least three times rather than the once last season. Let's talk about Cooks Hill United. Um, funny enough, I just had the vice president of the club around here. Um, transferring some matches from last year. Um, that's how much they care at Cook Seal, you know, they want to see the matches. Um, definitely not the sort of person who'd want to do an interview. Dave Morley, shout out to him. Um, and he's he spoke to me a lot about Graham Law, the new head coach at Cook Seal. And Cook, like, this this is a great appointment for Cook Seal. Um, it's got to work. It's really, really got to work. Um, you know, anyone who knows me knows that I've, I've been involved with Cooks Hill uh, for the last three seasons uh, until now going to Cahyba this season, of course, um, to play and um, be a media manager sort of role, I guess. But Cooks Hill, um, it hasn't worked. You know, Warren Spink, um, very good, very good junior coach. It didn't work out in first grade uh, for Spinksy. Uh, Blake Glennie didn't work out last season. It's got to work now, you know, they've had, um, if you include Mal Hinchcliffe's interim role, they've had four coaches now in three seasons in UFM football. This is Cook Seal's 20th season, and I think it's probably the biggest in the club's history. It's, they can't keep turning over players like they've been doing. Um, and I really, honestly, if you were to ask me now, I'd say Cooks Hill will finish in the top four. Um, Graham Law, I've just heard all sorts about Graham Law, positive stuff. Um, barely a negative word. This this is a serious, serious coach uh, for this level as well. I think he will bring something that that neither Blake Glenny or Spinksy could have brought. Um, I really rate Graham Law as a coach. Didn't work out too much at Adamstown, but um, turnover of players. Some of these are rumours. Um, not all confirmed yet. I don't know. I haven't spoken officially to Graham Law and or the club. It's all sort of being kept under wraps. Um, Graham Law is still trying to sign players, finalise things, but some of the names have been thrown around. Hacken Canley, the top name, former Broadmeadow Magic player there. Lee Ashton, Alex Gillespie, Stephen Bramley, Daniel Johnson, Jake Hamilton, and Callan Lewis, another former uh, Magic player. Uh, free from Ford and Damien uh, Spore, Spore, I believe it is. I, you know me, pronunciations. It'll still be bad this year, trust me. Jared Abbott and Jordan Smallhorn, all from Fort, and they'll probably be playing 23s, I'd imagine. Uh, trials, um, I did catch up with Cooks Hill. Funny enough, they've been having to train away from the AF field. They were training at Spears Point, uh, the Lake Macquarie Regional Football Facility, and sorry to Northern, but it's a very expensive place to train at, so Cooks Hill um, probably forking out a little bit of money to train there, and they definitely want to get a council ground soon enough. Um, so I caught up with them out there and uh, I waited till their training session ended, caught up with Graham Law and he told me Port Macquarie, Beresfield, Olympic and Edgeworth were the trials, not necessarily in that order. Um, but again on the AF field, it's been completely torn up the Newcastle Athletics track and um, long story short, um, due to some miscommunications and got, um, missed guide dates and all this sort of stuff. Long story short, the AF field is still all ripped up and um, 
not not confirmed yet, but very, very highly likely that Cooks Hill will not be playing their first home game or two at the AF field. They definitely won't be training there anytime soon, which is a shame because they National Park is, I can vouch for it, National Park is not suitable for a new FM team to train on. So Cooks Hill are sort of forced to move away and it's not the best sort of pre-season for Graham Law and um, I've been told that if the Affield was in operation they would have been playing Edgeworth, Broadmeadow, Hamilton Olympic and the Jets Youth which would have definitely been some big games for the club there, big, big sort of revenue raising trial matches. Um, so your 20th anniversary this season, um, only other two things I needed to mention was well, mainly the 19s team. The 17s team moved up, Michael Best coaching the 19s this season. I think they're a team to watch in the 19s, Cooks Hill. Um, I've seen firsthand a couple of their new uh, recruits for the 19s. I think they're going to be decent. We move on now to Cahiba FC and um, it's, not, it's not a great change at Cahiba from last season in terms of first grade, but the changes that are there are big ones. David Hodson being the biggest of them, Jamie Hadlow and the uh, Kepratis, Kepriatos, Kepriatis, the Kepo brothers, let's just call them the Kepo brothers, that's, that's probably the easiest way to pronounce it at this point. It is 11 o'clock, 11.30 at night, I am keen to watch Liverpool play Plymouth Argyle in a few few minutes, so sort of hurrying along here. Um, Look, at Hodson and Hadlow together, it, that's a very dangerous partnership. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly pause this video because you'd know it, the camera's going dead. Be right back. Alright, we're back. Um, good timing with that logo coming up there. How about that photo of Craig Johnson? Um, just thought I'd chuck in a few random photos of me there. Um, what we were talking about before I had to go and get another extension cable. This is just an absolute mess in here. Um, nothing's ever easy here on New Esports TV. Um, Kahiba, so Hodson, the Capo brothers, Hadlow, it's, it's definitely a team that will be probably front runners for, for a premiership. With, along with Bell Swans, I think Bell Swans and Cahiba, and um, you know, bring it on already. I can already hear it. You know, you're involved at Cahiba, of course. You're going to say Cahiba are going to do well. Well, yeah, they are, and um, I think a few teams will do well. I think Cooks Hill will do well as well, and I think there's a lot of teams still out there. I mean, it's it's January eighth. Um, there's no certainties, but there's two certainties. At least, at least in my mind, Belmont, Swansea, and Cahiba. And um, based on last year, and if they still play the same, you know, they play the same style of football, and the people they brought in, like Hodson and Hadlow up front for Cahiba, um, that, they, that 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 could really work. Um, they've got some pacey wingers there. It, I, I think it's going to be definitely Kyber and Bell Swans are my early tips anyway. Um, there's a lot, a lot of football to be played though, let's be honest here. Um, on the 23s front at Kyber, I haven't really spoken too much about 23s. There's not much going on in uh, any 23s news really around the league. Um, that's due to clubs still sort of finalising first grade and who'll be in 23s. Um, Cahibas, I think, will be still strong because first grade is stronger. So I think there'll be a lot of competition for first grade spots at Cahiba, which means the 23s will probably uh, succeed on top of that. Uh, some squad list, you'd think I'd have them ready, but I don't. Um, in the 19s, we'll talk about the Cahiba 19s in a quick second. Um, Jared Gorsuch, the coach, um, and I've been, this is someone I I worked alongside with at Cooks Hill, very, very good, I wouldn't say very good coach, yet to be proven as a head coach of an actual team, um, but someone who loves his football and um, this team, I think it's going to be a really good team in the 19s at Cahiba. Um, probably goal scoring is the only true question I have about them, but um, that'll be proven. I'm, I'm hearing all sorts of noises behind me. It's... There you go. Don't leave pieces of paper in the background when there's fans on. Okay. 
Kuiper 19, so goal scoring probably could be the big question. Um, Matty Hughes is a big out for them and he's still injured, um, but they do have they have a very good team. I'm looking at it now. Um, all the teams available on New Esports, click on the uh, the first tab after the home tab, New Esports, and I mean New FM NL1 2017 squads. And uh, yeah, Kahiba, some of the new signings in the 90s. Lucas Emmett Morley from South Cardiff. Um, it seems like every time I mention a club, their photo comes up on the screen. That's a bit worrying. Um, so, Jack Neen, another one. Jackson O'Donoghue. They've, they've, they've got a few, a few new signings. Jonathan Ridgian from Toronto. I think it's a good team in the 90s. Enough of Kahiba's 90s. Let's talk about the 17s as well while we're on it because that team has been announced and if there's teams that have been announced I was wondering what happened there with the screen um, I'm going to be talking about them uh, Kahiba 17s again like first grade in fact more than first grade I think these guys are the title favourites in, in the 17s Kahiba um, strong team last season only beaten by Lakes who eventually won the thing Westy who also very good have all uh, Gone, most of them have gone up to 19s, so it's got to the point where Kahiba 17s have got the um, experience needed in this level of competition to uh, actually succeed this season. And um, mostly same squad from last year, some good players in there at the Kahiba, for Kahiba 19s. Uh, Joseph Haddon, um, Kyle Williams, Stutchberry, Stutchberry. See, I. I can't even pronounce Kahiba names right. That's a problem, isn't it? Good, good team, Kahiba 17s. That was. I can see this. I'm watching. I'm watching the reflection of that TV doing all sorts of random stuff. So I'm just going to restart that little loop video thing that I had going there. Let's move on. This is just start talking about Kahiba and everything just falls apart. That's not not a good sign. Um, I am going to be playing Friday night all age there, so. Expect, expect some complaining from me on Saturdays next year about how sore I might be. Trials for Kahiba against New Lambton, Foster, Toronto and Beresfield that's yet to be confirmed but that's the rumours. And a complete, last thing about Kahiba, a complete re-turf of the, both fields at Kahiba Oval. Um, some fencing to be put in as well. This re-turf, I still don't know if, if the ground will be ready for round, round two. I hope it will be. Um, there are a couple teams that are having a bit of ground issues at the moment. One of those that aren't, and look at that, look at that timing. New Lambton Eagles, welcome to New FM Football, to the Eagles. Their 100th anniversary this season. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with New Lambton. I've had a lot of contact with some players there, um, some committee members there. Um, I haven't spoken to Andrew Packer since the season ended, but. Um, probably will get in touch with Andrew Packer soon. Um, great guy, Andrew Packer, and to be to be the head honcho there, the head coach, technical director. Um, what a guy to to have in charge in your first year back in this level of football. Um, I've been told today that round one at New Lambton, which I was always going to be going to against West Walls End, is now Old Boys Day, um, and whether or not. Whether or not I'll be running the PA or not, I don't know. I'll be making a big deal of it if I am. Um, definitely looking forward to being there that day. And if, um, as you know, I do get around, I do run PA at a lot of different grounds. Uh, the Walls End Derby last year, Westy and Walls End, that was a, a magnificent day. And this, I think, is going to be a similar sort of day for New Lambton. 1974, they won the uh, State League Premiership. Um, this isn't new. F this wasn't new FM. This was the actual NPL back then, known as the State League. They won the Premiership that year. The team they beat on the final day of the season to wrap that Premiership up was West Walls End Football Club. So, what a better, no better opponent in round one. New Lambton versus Westie. My only request is that New Lambton wear orange, just to be reminiscent of that day that they beat West Walls End in 1974. Andrew Packer head coach Paul McGuinness for the 23s who was their zone league coach 
uh, Craig Tindall in 17s, Nick Pepper 15s. Nick Pepper also signing on to play um, in the top grade, first grade. Um, I do have a first grade and 23s list from New Lambton. I haven't published it and I won't until the club say I can. There probably are changes to it at this time of year. Loads of ground improvements. Um, head over to New Lambton's Facebook page, New Lambton Football Club Premier Group on Facebook and you can catch up on all that. They're putting lights. The lights are very good. I actually, ironically, I went past there the night that they were testing them out. Um, great lighting. They're putting in um, perimeter fencing, seating, all this. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do with Alder Park. Because um, at, at, at the end of last season, Alder Park was literally just a park. It wasn't really... I mean, it was a football ground, but it wasn't... I think they do need a little bit of aesthetic changes. And I have heard they might be painting some blue and white details under the change rooms and whatnot. That'd be great to see some clubs sort of take their home ground in the next level. Obviously not all clubs can, not all, or not all clubs actually um, are the main tenant of their own ground. So anyway, the squad list, we can talk about New Lambton's lower grades. In the 19s, um, a decent team, but I don't really know how they're going to go yet. Um, a lot of a lot of names that I recognise here, Gabriel Baron smith from Wall's End, um, Dylan Halligan played at Valentine, and I think he was at Maryland Fletcher last year if I'm not mistaken, Seb Lewis from Cooks Hill, long time Cooks Hill player, Jaden Wiggins also was at Cooks Hill and uh, didn't play in UFM last year, um, Braden Shoemaker if I'm not mistaken was at Westie. Um, a lot of decent names there in the 19s. I think that'll be a team to sort of watch. And that's what I'm looking forward to the most, is seeing these... It's a new season, seeing what these teams can produce. Um, especially in pre-season. Pre-season is different from the actual season. You never know what happens. Um, the 17s, um, I only really recognise one name. That's Toby Mellon from Cooks Hill last season. Um... I'm imagining a lot of those players might have played in the under-16 squad at New Lambton that, that went to the grand final last year. I'm not sure if they won or not, I don't remember. Um, I think they played Cahiba in the inter-district final there. I, I think their 17s, well, that is, that's going to be their first... They're going to be opening the day on New Lambton's first, um, first home game, first game back in this division. Um, under 15s team also available on, on New Esports. Um, we'll move on now to the next team we're going to talk about. Actually, no. We, yes, we're done with New Lambton. Um, there'll be a lot more about New Lambton to come, though. Um, all the park, not a bad location. I can, I can get over there pretty easily, so expect, expect um, some training videos, um, some interviews and stuff from a training night soon enough. For the Singleton Strikers, that's who we're going to talk about next. Didn't really have any real news until probably a couple of days ago. Uh, David Willoughby obviously staying on as head coach. Um, a real, uh, you know, not... I don't know what the other clubs think about David Willoughby. I think he's a quiet sort of achiever. He's definitely not a quiet... Co well, he's not quite coach. He, he, um, he's a passionate coach. He's not as passionate as some coaches, but I really, really, really like David Willoughby as a coach at Singleton. Um, I think what they did last year was, was um, I think you'd call it, what would you call it? You'd call it inconsistent. That's what you'd call it. They had potential, and um, Singleton are a very, very hard team to play, especially up there away from home. Uh, Kieran Burrell is leaving. Uh, he was their star import this season. What a player. Just come and didn't even play the first six or seven rounds and then got player of the year. Zane Hand also leaving to go to New Lambton, I believe. Um, those are the only two squad things I know about. I don't know who's staying, who's going. There you go, there's the Singleton logo. Just to continue our tradition of logos popping up while I'm talking about the team. I do know the Singleton Trials. Uh, they're playing Lake Macquarie City on the 24th, Tuesday night, out there at Macquarie Field. Um, might go watch that one. That'd actually be a, a decent decent test for both teams, really. Um, Singleton first game and then Lakes going back to NPL. Um, a lot of people tipping Lakes to come last. Um, Tommy Sparre going to Lakes. Little, 
little uh, spoiler alert for you. Um, Singleton also playing Westy, Bell Swans, Fortin, and Mayfield United. Which, if that just if that happens to be played at Mayfield, I could pretty much walk there. <clears throat> that would be very handy for me. Um, Singleton, yes, I'm definitely going to be there for the Fortin game up there at Singleton, and I'm hoping I'm not going to be going to any training sessions for Singleton, but I'm hoping to go up there on that day that they play Fortin and do some catch up with some people. You know, maybe not maybe not everybody, but you know, catch up with some players. Um, at least maybe get some comments from David Willoughby, even if it's off camera, at least what he thinks about um, the season. We'll see how it goes. Um, everything's touch and go at this point. And it made me think, it made me think the other day, I've been counting down the days to, to do this video, um, counting down the days to pre-season. Um, I have a calendar here with all the games for pre-season. There are seven weeks seven weeks of pre-season games before we even kick a ball at the start of the actual season so we're going to be able to get a lot of info a lot of a lot of talking a lot and probably too much by the end of it um it's a good chance to trial a lot of new things i want to i want to do things differently at match days and at least have have a preview sort of show um at 8 30 in the morning at each ground which is going to be very difficult for games at Singleton and whatnot to get there and set things up and do a video and just preview the games on the particular day and then put those games up on the Facebook page, put those previews up on the Facebook page. I'm talking complete nonsense now. I'm starting to lose my spot. Liverpool versus Plymouth Argyle in 20 minutes, so let's hurry up. South Cardiff FC, that's who we're going to talk about now. Dennis Fajkovic to be the new head coach. Apart from that, I've heard nothing, um, and that's not that's not a bad thing. Some clubs are quieter than others. Southie aren't sort of they're not a bunch of you know they're not doing the Bell Swans thing saying you know look who we've signed on their Facebook page. Um, you know some clubs I like that. I also respect it when clubs don't do that. That's it's their option. Fatkovic is head coach. I don't I don't really know how this is going to go. This is. Um, I, f I believe he's unproven as, as a coach. I, I don't. I'm not sure what his um, coaching background is. It wasn't that long ago that he was actually playing. So, um, Dennis Fajkovic, head coach of South Cardiff. I do know they're playing Fortin on February 20th or something like that. Um, that's probably like a Wednesday, but they're playing Fortin around that time. It'll be February 18th. Um, or 26, 20, 25. 26, Sunday, February 26, South Cardiff versus Fordham. Southie have lost some players in the 19s and 17s. Um, I did see their goalkeeper, um, Josh... No. I'm trying to think of his name. Um, no, I can't think. Their 19s goalkeeper from last year played a bit of 23s. He was on the bench for the Jets youth um, not that long ago. I was watching a game over there at Magic, so that was... I don't know if he'll be going back to Southie or not. Um, I probably said Lucas Emmett Morley, he's gone to Cahiba. So I don't really know what the squads are in 19s or 17s. Um, hopefully we'll get onto that soon. There were rumours, and I think probably more than rumours, there was a, a situation out there at the ground where some asbestos has been dug up or found or something. Um, last I heard, Yulinga Oval was completely shut off to the public. So. Um, there are a couple people not involved with Cardiff, but who who do intend to go watch games there that are saying that it may not be ready for round one. I don't know what the situation is, so I'm waiting to hear from South Cardiff. It's all rumours at this point. Um, we move on to the Fortin Redbacks. Daryl McAllister returning as coach, and um, I've already teed this up with Daryl McAllister, actually, that I'm going to go there next Friday night and talk to the team. Probably talk to Daryl himself. Um, very interesting character, Dave. Um, Darren McAllister. Um, good coach. Underrated sort of team last year for and I've, They were on the edge of finals, let's, let's be honest. And if they can get it together again this year, then they can definitely push for finals. Um, Nathan McAllister returning the captain. Uh, Jamie Subert, Jock Thompson. Some good players there. Tyson Fletcher uh, signing on, who comes with a decent rating. Um, former NPL player. 
40th year at the Redbacks, so I'm looking to talk to them about their history. I'd love to hear about the history. Oh, they won, apparently they uh, won a grand final about 30 years ago in the old 4th Division. So, that, you know, that's the sort of random facts that I really like to hear. Um, for the 17s and the 19s, it was a very, very um, unusual setup there at Fortin last year where the 17s could play 19s and vice versa. Everyone was only 16 or 17. It was, it was a crazy set, or not a crazy setup, it, it was a young setup and they've got one more year experience and I think that's going to come in handy. Their 19s team last year fought and on their day they produced some, some real crackers of games. I, I remember the game at Cahiba, I remember when they came to Cooks Hill and absolutely trounced Cooks Hill. Um, trounced? Trounced? Something. Google that one. Trials for Fortin. They're playing West Wall's End. It will be our first trial match. Redbacks versus West Wall's End on the 21st of January at Johnson Park. I cannot wait for that. Football's back. Um, Fortin v Westie. Then they're playing Maitland. Then they're playing Edgeworth, Singleton and Southie. Edgeworth and Maitland, they're big games, especially Edgeworth. Um, that could be a real chance for Fortin to say, you know, look, we're serious this year about making the top four, and I think they will be. Uh, Toronto Awabo is the next team we're going to talk about, and we're probably not going to spend too much time on it because I've heard pretty much nothing. Um, Adam Routledge will be the head coach. He was a 17s coach last season. Um, Long-term player at the club, I believe. Um, unproven as head coach, and I don't know how this is going to work because I know... I've, I've seen the New Lambton squad, and New Lambton have five or six players from Toronto. I've been told other players have left Toronto. I've also been told some players are staying at Toronto that have apparently left. I don't know. And at this point, it's all rumours. I do know that their committee was a bit chopped and changed at Toronto. I, I don't know how they're going to go. Um, honestly, I'm, at this point, I'd say I'm worried that they might not go as good as... I mean, last year was... I mean, they won some games last year, but obviously it wasn't a great year. Um, you'd think it'd be better. But again, at this point, they, they're just staying, they're staying quiet, keeping their cards close to their chest. So you can't really, um, you know, predict too much on how they'll go. Um, but I do definitely have my worries for Toronto because, I mean, and last year was horrible. Like, what, you know, they've definitely got to try and um, improve that. For Walls End FC... Talking about changes, Chris Gallagher is back as the coach, um, legend of the club, Chris Gallagher Jr. Um, huge player exodus. There's a team there. That's the grand final. Plenty of faces in that team that aren't going to be there next year. Um, some people think for the better. Some people think for the worse. I'm one of those people in the middle um, because I can tell you right now, I don't believe Walls End will be winning the title this year. Um, and you're going to laugh at me and, you know, film that, record that and then play that to me on September 10th or whenever, um, the day after the grand final when you're lifting your third straight trophy. But I think what the focus is for Walls End now is this three-year NPL window, a youth focus sort of mixed with experience and sort of try and build, their, build themselves up off the field. Walls End will probably compete for the top four, but I just, I really think it's not going to be a third straight title. That's going to be, it's going to be very, very, um, a big, it's going to be a big one if they do manage it. I'll tell you that. Uh, West Walls End. Uh, Gary Rowe back as coach, I believe. I haven't confirmed that yet, but um, probably safe to, to bet that. Uh, no player news at all from um, the, top, the top two grades. They did have their general meeting today, which is now yesterday. It's now gone past midnight. Um, Jason Taylor is a new president, so um, congratulations to Jason. I know him pretty well. Um, good, good people there at Westie. A real strong sort of uh, community. Um, and you know, let's face it, they're not the biggest club in the league. They're not the richest club in the league. Um, they do things the hard way, Westie, and. Um, it's just good to see them still fighting after, you know, nearly going out of commission a few years ago. Um, Westie, the second oldest team in the league, I think. 
I think Wall's End's older. Anyway, can't wait for that Wall's End derby round nine, I believe it is this year. Anyway, let's talk about West Wall's End's under... Actually, we'll, we'll talk about the 17s first. Um, the 15s team's also there to, um, to look at on New Esports. A uh, couple, I can see three, three brothers of players in the higher grade, so that's good to see um, real sort of family club West Wall's End. In the 17s, a um, few changes. Uh, Blake Arthur coming in from Toronto. A um, couple of the decent signings from NPL. And I think they're going to be a decent team again in the 17s, I really do. Josh Snedden saying goals. The 19s, I think, is where it's at for Westy. Uh, Steve Thompson to coach. Uh, Cessnock's head coach from last season. Um, that's going to be very interesting to see Tomo coaching coaching um, a youth team, a 19s team. I think it'll work. I think he's, I think he's a good coach. Um, this team, I'm looking at it now. I'm looking through this team, and I'll tell you right now, West Walls and 19s top four, based on that team. I think they've they got a decent, decent squad. Um, Barnes, Hayter, Knight, Kramer, Taylor, Cooper Smith as well, Dan Roxby, um, Cal Melville, Nick Bull, James Barnes, I already said James Barnes, um, Matt Crawford, a lot of experience there from last season, especially in the 17s. It's sort of the best of the 19s and the best of the 17s. They both made the grand finals last year. So look out for West Walls and 19s this season. We will see them on the first day of pre-season against Fortin. So that is that. That's every club we've gone through. Um, I, I have no idea how long this video is. My, this is a new camera um, with new lights and a new, new screen. So I don't know how long this has gone. So I, I used to have the timer, so I, I, my apologies if it's long. I'm definitely aiming to, to really compact my videos this year, not just talk for the sake of talking, just get straight to the point. And let's get straight to the point. Week 1 of pre-season, Saturday 21st of January, West Walls End versus Fortin, possibly Bell Swans versus Edgeworth on the Sunday, if they don't play that on the Saturday, I'll definitely go to that. Um, and again, my, my request, it'd be very, very good to hear from you the clubs, the players, the coaches, any news is, is good to hear. Um, I definitely want to try and finalise these uh, trial matches and figure out where I'm going to go each week and how I'm going to get around to each club. So Fortin this Friday night and then the Tuesday after I'll be going to Bell Swans, catching up with Josh Rufo and all them. Um, I've spoken to Singleton about going up there for the trial match and doing some interviews and stuff. Cessnock, I'm going to try and go. That's the plan, is to try and get round to every single club in pre-season and do a 20 or 30 minute feature on that club. Bit of history, bit of what they think for this year, maybe the coaches, players, whoever wants to chat will chat. That's the plan. Um, whether that plan comes to fruition or not is a question. Um, that's it for me now. This is episode one of New Esports TV for the year. Um, I'm surprised this has worked as, as well as it did. Been, it's been a long off season. It's been a while since I've talked to the camera. But it's, it's gone okay. And um, this lighting, all those complaints last year about the lighting, look at the lighting now. It's, it's very bright. Um, I'm not going to lie, I've got sore eyes from how bright it is in here. So that, that is that. Um, Season kicks off on March 11th, and um, we will have FFA Cup. I was just talking to someone before about the FFA Cup. That's changed this year. Zone League possibly coming in on March, mid-March, and um, that means midweek games for new FM teams, which is going to annoy some people. Me, personally, that's more football, um, and that's good. I love Cup games. I really do love cup games, um, especially new FM teams versus NPL teams. I'll get right into that. Um, so yeah, there'll be some cup games on new esports, there'll be all that. Um, this is just the beginning, just the beginning of a big year from now, the 9th of January, all the way through to 
let's say the third week of September, week after week after week. Episode one is finished, and um, as you can see, the TV's completely cacked it with the graphics. I don't know what happened there. Um, so it's probably a good time to call it quits, right? FA, FA Cup tonight, as I talk, I'm recording this, Plymouth Argyle versus Liverpool. If, if Plymouth somehow win, I'll be wearing the Plymouth shirt tomorrow, which is Monday. So when, I, when you see this video, I may be wearing a Plymouth shirt. They're not going to win. Um, so that is that. New Esports TV, Episode 1. We are back. 2017. Happy New Year again. I'm Ty Stebbin, and I will see you next week. And I will see, I will see the Fortin Redbacks next Friday night. And um, that will be featured on New Esports TV next week. We might, hell, we might even do the whole episode. From, from up there at Fawn slash Tanambit. Um, great, great part of the world, Tanambit. Feels weird saying that. Um, I, reckon, I reckon it's going to be a great, great night for um, to just kick off these interviews and get back to actually getting out there and talking to clubs. Um, and that's something I didn't do last year a lot of. You know, there was a Cook Seal thing, there was Bell Swans thing at the end of the year. We want to try and spread our wings. We want to try and be fair. Um, New Esports grows and grows. Uh, 3,600 likes now. It's completely amazing how this is, how big this is in, in such a short time frame, entering our third year now, and this is going to be our biggest year. Make no doubt about that. I will see you next week.